let's go back to the macro question, which is a person is looking to maximize, optimize, maintain, increase lean body mass. This should be a goal of everybody, right? It doesn't matter if you're a 75 year old woman or a 25 year old man, the maintenance of lean body mass, if not the increase in lean body mass is a very important pillar of living a long, healthy life. So if that is true, then presumably anything we can do nutritionally, we'll talk about training later, but anything we can do nutritionally to maximize or increase muscle protein synthesis should be good. But the one thing that we're yeah. missing is the window over which that happens. So is the goal always to maximize that for the highest peak independent of the base? Or do we want more of a time released effect where we say, look, we'll take a lower rate or a lower peak muscle protein synthesis, but I'd like to sustain that for many, many hours. Um, so you're laughing. So I've touched a nerve, which means I'm probably asking a question <laughs> you, you are asking, but I'll, I'll let you go from there. No, this, this is awesome. I mean, th these are all the questions that, that the field has and that we all have. So because it becomes much more uh, difficult because one factor we didn't discuss is the amount of protein. Mm. Because the amount of protein also has an effect, of course, on the curve. And you can compensate uh, with, with, with the amount. So getting back to, we'll probably come back to that as well. But so if you, um, yeah, there's estimations up to two to three grams of leucine in a meal, will actually induce a rapid increase in circulating leucine, and that will stimulate muscle protein synthesis. And if you have enough building blocks available, you have an anabolic response for at least up to five hours. So this has led most of us in the field to believe that it's best to ingest, at least now we're talking about healthy people, if you become older, you become less resistant to the anabolic properties of amino acids, anabolic resistance, it's probably also something that we come back to later. But if you're a healthy, active male or a female, you 20 grams of protein is assumed to be the optimal amount to maximize muscle protein synthesis for up to four to five hours after a meal. And this is the reason why in so many packages, you now see 20 grams. Everywhere you see 20 grams. Now, that comes from studies showing that 40 grams of protein, ingestion of 40 grams of protein does not result in greater muscle protein synthesis rates than 20 grams of protein. So it's assumed that 20 gram is the optimal amount in healthy people. And of course, we always have those discussions. If you're 120 kilogram, you probably need more. If you're 50 kilogram, you probably need less. Yes, but you can't do a study with every individual in the, in the world. But so 20 grams now, if you assume that you will have an anabolic response to each main meal, then the advice is there to ingest 20 grams of protein with each main meal. Now, if you're becoming older, there are suggestions you need more to compensate for that. But let's stick now with healthy people. That's 20, 20, 20, um, possibly also an evening uh, protein snack 20, and then you already have 80 grams of protein, which for most people is already more than 1 to 1.1 grams of protein per day. Now, we are people that believe that you actually could use more protein, which automatically happens when you become active, because when you become active, you eat more, and then you easily eat uh, more than 1.1. Than so it's a non-discussion. But so the idea is distribution of protein that every meal is an anabolic response. Just one question before you go further. This 20 grams is the maximum amount of protein you need to get maximum protein synthesis, muscle protein synthesis, was based on what type of protein? That was based on milk and egg. So there was a study on milk and there was a study on an egg. Okay, protein. so it's whole food. It's not using just whey or just casein. No, it's not whole foods. This is a protein concentrate. So egg oh. protein concentrate and milk protein concentrate. So that's a very important point because as I said, if your digestibility is not 100%, which in a meal is never, of course, and you have a delay in digestion and absorption, then 20 grams could be suggested to be a minimum. Yeah. So in other words, what I'm hearing here is for people like me who don't really like shakes that much, I prefer to eat food as opposed to drink shakes. I do drink them because sometimes it's convenient. Um, but if you're going to try to get this through food, 
you're by definition, you're going to be working with an inferior protein from the standpoint of speed in terms of digestibility and rate of digestion. So you might need a protein meal that's 30 grams or more. And then if you're, you know, 90 kilos, uh, you're probably on the bigger end of that. Anyway, you might be 40 grams that you need per meal of real food. Is that kind of yep. how you would think about that? Yes. And so automatically you also get to that because we always have those discussions, of course, because if I say that you need you need more protein, you ingest more protein, and they look at me like I'm advocating a high protein diet. But these discussions are, of course, all, always a little bit weird. If you have a 65 kilogram weighing Tour de France cyclist and he only consumes a very little amount of protein in the form of only 10% of his energy intake, he's still ingesting probably more than two and a half grams of protein per kilogram body mass per day, even though he absolutely doesn't need it for his limited amount of muscle. So uh, the more active you become and the more healthy you are, the more protein you consume. We always have, I mean, World Health Organization says 0.8 grams per kilogram body mass per day. But yes, maybe you can survive on that. That's yeah. fine. But it's certainly, in my beliefs, not optimal. But even whether it's optimal or not, it's not. It's a non-discussion. Every healthy, relatively sedentary person, I mean, if I, I mean, whether it's here or in England or the US, people consume about healthy people, and nothing, nothing strange, and not a complete uh, recreational athlete, already consume 1.1 to 1. Point, yeah, between 1.1 and 1.3 grams of protein per kilogram body mass per day. And they're not even trying to consume more protein. Yeah, I mean, we're 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 typically pushing our patients to much higher than that. Like, we're 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 asking patients to be closer to one point six uh, grams per uh, per per kilo. Uh, pardon me, grams. Yeah, grams per kilo per day. And truthfully, if they're re if we're really trying to put muscle on people and their training volume is high, we're closer to two grams per kilo. <laughs>